Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two of this unique maps show match between Salami and Core. We're going into a traditional Age Vampires 2 map, a map that was with the franchise for a long, long time. It is going to be Baltic. And as you see, it in many ways is a slightly improved version of Boulder Bay. I know it sounds weird, but we basically you have a pond in the middle and the players on each side of the pond. Now you could ask, oh shoot, this is just as bad as Boulder Bay, but I can tell you it's not. And the reason why it's not as bad as Boulder Bay is because now you have two passages for the players to cross. And it makes it much more difficult for a player to just wall up and then turtle up. It's still possible to wall yourself, but as you see, it's going to take a lot more effort from the players to wall both of their flanks and completely prevent the opponent from putting up any aggression. Core won the previous game. He was able to take down Salami on Socotra, and now... We're jumping into game number two. Spawning on the left side is going to be Salami playing as the Chinese in blue. And on the right side, it is going to be Core playing as the Holy Roman Empire in red. HRE having that proud buff both the villagers under the town center on the food. And the Lumberjack, this is a great spot for Core to be in. He's already mining gold. And that is a little surprising of a villager split, I must say. I'm just now realizing. He's got one on gold. He's got three villagers taking food. And he's got four villagers taking food, but there is no dock on the horizon just yet for him. Meanwhile, for Salami, he's just now placing his first dock out here. Deep fish very close for him. In general, this map has a ton of deep fish to work with. So as you see, both players will be able to access plenty of deep fish close to the shoreline. So really, it doesn't even matter where exactly they place their dock because there is so many deep fish close to the shoreline. The amount of shore fish on this map is minimal. You do have a couple of droplets, but that's basically it. Looks like Salami was quite successful finding sheep here, as on the other side, Core is just now going to find the opponent's base. And you have an early Imperial officer coming out here for Salami. Core getting his scout heavily damaged by the Town Center fire, but he's going to get away with that. We're playing this on the PUP build, which means that this is not the live build, this is the basically the preview of the future build of Age of Empires 4, which means that there were quite a lot of balance changes. This is something that I talked about in the previous casts I had on the custom maps. And we're going to have an Imperial Officer, as you see, now costing 100 food and 50 gold. So the balance or the cost of the Imperial Officer was slightly tinkered with by the devs. And now it's actually very expensive for Dark Age terms, if you think about that. Because 50 gold is something that you don't really want to spend on officer in Dark Age, or at least that's not something that you would do at the first glance. Now Salami is very heavy on the lumberjacking, he's supervising that lumber camp, and that's going to allow him to get some more fishing boats rolling. Meanwhile, on the other side, Doc is already up for core, but as you see, his first fishing ship is just now popping out. Looking at his resources, he's got some gold to work with. He is currently not having a proud inspire the villagers on gold. He's inspiring his food and the food villagers. He can start pulling away villagers from food soon, though, because he's going to have the fishing eco working. Currently, it is 18 eco for Salami. Core is sitting at 14, 15. But of course, you do have Core with the prelate boosting the villagers. So I guess it makes it rather even. Core heavily delayed his dock compared to the opponent. But it also means that he's going to be in a pretty decent position gold mining wise. And he's getting close to feudal age here. So... He didn't go for a ton of fishing eco, instead he started piling up some food, piling up some gold, and that way we'll be able to get a slightly faster feudal age here. As you see, the product is still being active, it's being microed back and forth between the food wood and gold deposits, and he's probably going to place the Alcan Chapel right over here in just a matter of seconds. Meanwhile, on the other side, for Salami, he's heavy on the fishing. As you see, now he's collecting attacks from that lumber camp, but he's going to have to dispatch a couple of villagers to mine gold because he spent some gold on that officer and he's still 80 gold short from getting to Feudal Age. Core is going to send in his scout to try and harass that dog. The most important thing here for Core is that he's going to be aware that his opponent has quite a lot of fishing eco here. Looks like once again a scuffle between scouts. Last time the scouts just killed each other. And let's see if that's going to be the case here once again. You get the feel that that's going to be the same scenario. Core now disengages though. He's going to have a second scout. That's why he did that. He brought in a second scout and said, Okay, I want to keep burning down your dock here, my friend. And for Salami, he's queuing up a new scout. So he wants it to be a 2v2 for the time being. Transport ship. A transport ship is coming out just now by Salami. Villagers are being called... Could this be, could this be a landing with a Barbican of the Sun? That would be kind of crazy. 
But we're talking about salami, and yeah, it's landing. Holy potatoes, is that a landing? I'm gonna go absolutely crazy on this one. It's a landing. One scout gets taken down from core. He definitely saw the transport ship. There's no way that he did not spot this one. Here's the landing, and it's no less than 12 villagers. And you see D-Day coming in here for Salami. Meanwhile, Kor is going to start walling off the shoreline. He knows very well what's coming his way. But can he wall this off in time? That's the question. Villagers are going to just run around that wall. And it looks like Kor's walls will just be just incomplete by the time the villagers arrive. There is the Barbican being dropped. How is Kor going to hold this off? That's such a perfect Barbican placement even. The all villagers are out here, Salami doesn't have textiles on them. Kor is going to pull his villagers, trying to stop this one. He might be able to get one or two villager kills. He gets one... Oh, nope. Yep, there is the first one being killed, but that was basically it. One villager for the price of that Barbican of the Sun is perfectly acceptable here for Salami, especially because he retaliates by taking down the villager from Kor. And now he's able to send out the villagers to burn that dock down. Speaking of which, there is no combat ship coming out here right now for Kor. He needs to get at least one galley out and destroy the fishing geek of Salami, because Salami's concept in this game is that he's gonna have a bunch of villagers that are basically not working, but he's got the fishing eco to compensate for it, and he now is dropping an outpost to protect his own fishing ships. Looks like Kor's dock is being burnt down as we speak, and for Kor, he's got absolutely no defense against this one. The D-Day is working out for Salami, what a masterpiece from him. He's able to burn down the dock, and I wonder if he's just transporting his villagers back, saying, my job here is done. It seems like it. It very much seems like it. He's gonna be like, okay, hop in, ladies, hop in, gentlemen. It is going to be a trip back home, and I'm just gonna drop you off back at home. Now, Kor's eco isn't looking that terrible. If he finds himself another gold mine, he's actually close to Castle Age. Now, he has just found himself a gold mine. He's gonna need a market to try and balance his eco a tiny bit. Now his fishing eco is going to be idle because he has no more docks to work with. So the next step for Core, while this looks scary, it's not as intimidating as it looks like actually. Because the fishing ships are currently idle, but he could make a dock on the right side. This is something that Salami would not be able to find, at least not immediately, and he could use those fishing ships over there. Now, here comes a junk from Salami, so he's coming in to sink the fishing eco of Core, which means that Core will be without fish. Currently, it's 30 eco for him, soon we'll lose 6, and on the other side, 31 for Salami. Indeed, fishing ships are trying to flee, but there is no hope for them to survive. There is no docks, no combat ships for Kor. Kor is not far away from Castle Age, however, and if he gets to Castle Age, a siege workshop and trebuchets could turn things around, take down that Barbican. Now, the concern for him is that Salami isn't far away from Castle Age either. Salami could technically decide to go for Song Dynasty first, just so that he gets the villager bonus, but I would think that Castle Age makes more sense for him, because that way he would get War Junks, and of course he would get access to Palace Guards, something that the Chinese want to go for in the long run. Or still a little low on gold, as you see he's floating a ton of food, that's the problem for him. By the time he got out to this gold mine, he already had the food for Castle Age, and since he doesn't have a market, he wasn't able to just sell some food to get the gold he needs. And this is going to delay his Castle Age quite a bit. He's just now dropping the Regnitz Cathedral. Now, the Regnitz Cathedral was nerfed. At least, it is nerfed in the PUP patch. It's still the same old Regnitz Cathedral in the live build, but in the future, when the PUP build becomes the official build, you're going to have the Regnitz Cathedral nerf come in. And now, it only stores two relics. It's still a powerful landmark, but it's not as powerful as it used to be. Speaking of two relics, you can go for this one, that's guaranteed, and then either you can go for this one, or this one. Salami is looking at the right side one, and he has a scout being sent to the left hand side one as well. So Salami knows very well that Kor is gonna have to move towards those relics soon. Salami actually going up to Castle Age with the Imperial Palace. He rushed his Castle Age time as well, and instead of going for the Clock Tower, he's going for the Palace. Now this is going to give him a chance to spot the enemy villagers here with this ability. And this is something that's immensely helpful because if you think about it, does he need a clock tower right now? He doesn't really need any siege weapons, so it's not immediately necessary. But being able to spot enemy villagers could be very helpful because you could find the enemy gold mining operation, you could find sneaky villagers. It's all about that. He's going to leverage that ability 
and try and just harass the gold income, potentially the food income of the opponent as well, because keep in mind that now there is no fishing eco for Core. Core was able to get a dock up here for himself, and for now, he's got the fishing boats garrisoned inside there, but Core's got no combat ships coming out, and Salami already has a war chunk being made, so this dock isn't going to live forever, that's for sure. Salami is rushing up walls on the left side, he's bringing in the villagers, he's realizing that, look, there is free relics on this left side part of the map. If I wall this off right over here, my opponent won't be able to access the relics. I will also cut him off from two sacred sites. On the right side, Volo was attempted by Kord though. He picked up the relic and it looks like the villagers for Salami were just a little too late to the party. But now the prelate is going to make a run for it with the relic. There is only one scout chasing him, so this prelate should be able to make it back home. And with that, Kord should have the two relics he needs for the Ragnitz Cathedral. But this was close. If the villagers of Salami arrived just a little faster, this could have been another failed attempt for Kor to pick up a relic, because on the left side, he wasn't able to pick it up. Salami was able to wall it off a little sooner than he was able to arrive, and now, you see, Salami's got a monastery up front as well. He sent out a monk to try and get the sacred sites, and of course the relics for himself. Looks like a new transport ship is joining the fun over here. Not exactly sure what this is going to do here, but we do have a Hawk popping out in just a matter of seconds here for Kor. Indeed, he's opening up with the Hawk. He's going to take down that one scout with one of the broadside ballistas, and now he's going to focus that war junk. He could still split the attention of this Hawk in between that galley or that uh, light junk and the war junk, but ultimately, you want to focus down at least one ship and finish it off, and so far, it wasn't really successful for Core. He is spinning to win, and this transport ship is great here to absorb damage potentially, because in some cases, if Core is just going to allow his ship to target the enemy ships here randomly, some of the shots might actually hit the transport ship instead of the enemy combat vessels. Looks like the Hawk was traded off for the galley of the opponent, which means that the war junk is still alive. And that's the more valuable combat ship here for Salami because it does a ton of damage to the dock. And as you see, the dock is now going down. Meanwhile, for Salami, um, he has gotten the Imperial Academy. So now he's in Song Dynasty. He's going to have the Villager Production Bonus. And we're looking into a 35 eco situation versus 49. So Salami's eco is now skyrocketing. And as you see, he's got so many fishing ships here. And he could add even more because, strictly speaking, there is no one that's really contesting the water right now. Towers are coming up on the right side, Salami tried to sneak up a tower on the opponent's gold mine here. This is why that ability to spot enemy villagers is very valuable for Salami. Counter tower was there for core, but he's got no one garrisoning it, which means that this is not firing at the villagers, and it could just be burned down by the wheels of Salami. Looks like core is escaping this position, and the problem for him now is that there is no backup gold mines to go to anymore. Villagers just fled this gold mine, and as you see, there is going to be a second outpost being dropped by core. Because he knows that Salami could continue with that tower rush any time in the future. Salami now capping the sacred sites on the left side. He could technically cap the one on the right side and that is exactly what he's doing right now. He is going to have three sacred sites under his control and he's going to start the sacred site countdown in a matter of seconds. Meanwhile though there is the palace of Schwabia for core. That's what he was thinking about. He mined just enough gold for Imperial Age, and of course, he's got the Ragnitz Cathedral still giving him 600 per minute. So that's why he just disappeared from that gold mine so easily. He said, okay, I have enough gold income to get to Imperial, and now I'm going to start working on the Pass of Shrabia to recuperate my eco losses. Having to add farms on a map like this is terrible, of course, because you want to live off from the fishing, but that's not really an option. At least not for the time being. Core, he technically could go for a siege workshop, go for bombards and take down the Barbican of the Sun. But ultimately, what he needs to go for is some sort of attempt to reclaim water control. Because he can't let Salami live off from so much fishing. Because if you look at Salami's resource income, 860 food per minute. And he isn't even having a lot of fishing ships here. We're talking about, what, 15? Yeah, 19 fishing ships. This could be 50 fishing ships for Salami. And he could have like 4,000 food per minute from that. Salami himself is getting close to Imperial and he's got stone for a keep as well. He could soon drop a keep around this area, he would also secure the boar and the large gold with that. And it looks like that's exactly the plan. Or maybe even more aggressive. He knows that his opponent has no army. So nothing prevents him from dropping a keep over here. 
He needs to delete the walls for that, but I wonder if that's the plan. Indeed, he's making a gate right now. He's coming in with a forward keep. Kor has no response to that. There's the first siege workshop coming out. He's grabbing a bombard. He wants to take down that Barbican. A couple of villagers also coming in here. I wonder if they were transported over or they just walked around. I think they just walked around from this location here. Now fortifications coming in on those towers. Looks like the lumberjacks had to move away for Kor because of that tower. And that's a very aggressive castle from Salami. That's a very aggressive castle, but that might not go up actually. Because there is going to be a tower right next to it. 29 villagers are being pulled by Salami for this one. Town center fire is helping out, the tower fire is helping out, but Chinese villagers build very fast. And as you see, there's a bombard also opening up here for Core. He's sending in the villagers, he really wants to get, to get this stop, but it looks like he won't be able to stop this one. He will have a chance to take it down with the bombard, as you see, it's already on only 60% HP. Salami, now dropping a siege workshop, he needs a couple of spring goals to deal with this one. He's also pulling the villagers to repair. He knows that this castle is so painful for the opponent to deal with and it's right at the heart of his economy that he just wants to keep this alive as long as possible. Salami is going to start depleting his wood stockpile really fast though with that castle constantly being fired upon by bombards and his villagers are also being picked off here on the front line so this is not going to be sustainable for Salami by any means and as you see slowly but surely his villagers are getting picked off this castle isn't going to stand for long. Salami is actually losing a ton of eco here he's down to 55 and Strictly speaking, Kors at 47. Is Salami over committing here? Because Salami is now losing a ton of villagers here for absolutely no gain. And he isn't going to Imperial just yet. He could. His eco balance, if he just balances it out, would allow him to do that. Now first Springhold pops out, he's trying to snap down the Bombard. But the castle is going to go down no matter what. Town Center Fire is going to help against that Springhold as well. Bombard should be able to get a shot out. Indeed, it gets a shot out. And with that, the first spring gold goes down. New barracks are being placed by Salami, so he's not done yet, though. He wants to push deeper into the opponent's base. If Kor is able to take down this Barbican and then take down the Siege Workshop's barracks, there is still a glimpse of hope for him here. But Salami is coming out with now supervised barracks. That's going to be two out of the four barracks supervised. So palace guards are increasing in numbers as we speak. Bombards, though, opening up against those barracks. Villagers were pulled by Core, and remember, even though the Pass of Shwabia itself was nerfed, so it's not as strong as it used to be, the villagers are still, to a certain extent, throwaway units for the HRE, so they can justify focusing down the Barbican, justify focusing down the barracks, and just making sure that the opponent isn't able to reinforce this battlefield. There's a bombard emplacement on that tower. Palace Guard's diving in, trying to snipe a bombard. More villagers are being pulled. And it looks like with the tower fire, with the town center fire and the villager repairs, Core is able to keep that bombard alive. Palace Guard slowly getting taken down. Bombard takes down one of those buildings. There is still three more barracks for Salami to operate with. There is a sacred site victory condition also triggered. I'm not exactly sure when that countdown started, but it probably was going on for at least 3-4 minutes now. Core taking up the Barbican of the Sun will allow him to get the berries back, so he's gonna have at least a moderately functional food eco. And Salami still not going into Imperial. He still has a ton of food to work with, decent amount of gold as well, but he's not mining any gold right now. Cannons now slowly cleaning up both of those barracks as we got some knights being queued up by Salami. It's only one stable on the battlefield, but it's being supervised. For now, his villagers on the front are working as lumberjacks, but as you see, he's lo losing a lot of those barracks here really fast. So, by the time he's able to mass up a large army, he's going to get that forward cleaned up. This is a scary army though, and as you see, he's slowly crawling backwards here, just dropping building after building after building, because he knows that he needs to maintain his presence over here. He can't let the HRE player just boom back up here with the Pass of Shrabia. The cannons do sink that one war junk on the shoreline, so if Kor ever wants to go back on the water, now is the time, and that's exactly what he's doing. Going back on the water would allow him to start contesting that fishing eco for Salami, and the moment Salami loses that fishing eco, he's in trouble. Because we're right now looking at 63 eco as opposed to 61, so that even economies, or at least the numbers of workers, are even. But the moment all that fishing eco goes down for Salami, his eco is going to be an absolute train wreck. Now he still has free sacred sites and free relics, so that's going to be quite a lot of gold income. In fact, if you look at the resource income per minute, Salami is basically leading in every category. The key thing is that Salami's got the right side stonewalled, 
The left hand side for now is just Palisades, but quite a lot of army is gathering over here. And the countdown is still going on for Sacred Sites. We still don't have the Sacred Site countdown displayed on the overlay, Sag. Here comes the push though, that's quite a lot of Lancers out there. Also, a decent amount of Palace Guards. They are using Staggered Formation, which will make it much more difficult for those towers with cannons on them to decimate those ranks. And it looks like we're going to have a Karak being added by Core. But here comes the Cavalry. Core's got a couple of Lancers here to try and fight this one off. But his numbers aren't looking spectacular, and the Palace Guards are flooding into his base. His Villagers are not targets of those Lancers. As Salam is trying to jump on the Siege weapons, Villagers once again being pulled to repair. The first Bombard gets taken down, second Bombard on the north also gets taken down. Third Bombard, the only one left here for Core, he's going to lose that third Bombard as well. And the numbers here for Salami are still looking good. Palace Guards are still alive, Lancers are still alive. And while Core does have the Elite Knight upgrade for himself, he simply doesn't have the numbers. I wonder if Kord tried to pull off a relic from that Ragnitz Cathedral and try to pull off a conversion here, because you get the feel that he needs a conversion here to try and stop this. Army numbers, only 9 for Core, 27 for Salami, and that's exactly what Salami needs, just maintain the pressure inside the opponent's base, force his opponent to stay inside those town centers with the villagers. Salami is still in Castle Age, by the way. We got some new knights out for Kord, he could clean this force up. He's still expanding to the north. The problem for Core is, as you see, three minutes until Sacred Victory remaining. So at 24.30, we're going to have Salami win this game on Sacred Site conditions. And Core is very far away from being able to do anything about those Sacred Sites. Now, he's got the Karak out, and this is going to force Salami to call off his fishing ships. And the docks are also being taken down. It looks like a war junk is being added, but that's not going to be very effective against the Karak here. Although it's only one Karak versus two potentially free war junk soon. Slaughter imminent though on the north. Core isn't cleaning up these forces and everywhere we look it's dead bodies littering the battlefield. Salami is just massacring all the villagers for Core. Core is down to 42. His entire food eco is a train wreck. He does have elite knights but he simply can't make any of them because every single villager that he had working on food is now gone. He finally cleans this up, but he's nowhere close to being able to contest those sacred sites. And that's the concerning thing for him right now. If Salami was an Imperial, he would be guaranteed to win this game, I think. Now it's four war chunks against one Karak, though. And the numbers are looking way better here for Salami. He's spinning to win. Look at that spin. <laughs> that might even be a bit of an overspin, but he's going to sink that one Karak that was sent in to take down the fishing eco of Salami. Looks like Kor is able to get a defensive castle up here and now he's crawling up with towers. There is still about two minutes left to go until that sacred site victory. And now, no army on the battlefield. No army on the battlefield at all. Looks like it is going to be Kor tapping out. He's realizing that he's bumping into stone walls. I think his only hope was that the left side is not fortified with stone walls. And the moment he sees the stone walls, he knows very well that he wasn't able to, or he wasn't going to be able to get through those walls. It is just too much time. He had two minutes to somehow take down stone walls, get through them, and then neutralize one sacred site. The reality is that he was caught off guard by his tower rush, or at least that Barbican drop at the beginning, and he was set back for so, so long. He was forced away from his gold mine at the beginning, that delayed his castle age. Then he gets forced off from his other gold mine, that delays his imperial. And every single moment in this game, Salami was just ahead when it comes to economy. And Salami was just ahead when it comes to military. This graph doesn't show the actual fishing ships count, so this is why it's a little deceiving. But if you look at the eco stats, double the food for Salami, pretty much same wood, slightly more gold for Salami, some more stone. But of course, the difference in the fishing eco can be seen in this food graph. So with that, Salami is able to eco things out here, and we're going into game number three, another unique map, in just a second.